There's a big change coming to Chase Elliott's number nine team in 2024. Late on Saturday night, between the end of the SEC Championship game and the start of the Big Ten Championship game, Chase Elliott spotter Eddie DeHaan decided that was the perfect time to announce that he would not be returning to the nine team in 2024. After 12 years, 26 races, one championship in 2020, 426 races with crew chief Alan Gustafson, and being the spotter for both Chase Elliott and Jeff Gordon, Eddie DeHaan has decided to do something else next year. What that is, who knows? Maybe he's going to go open up a boat rental shop. Maybe he's going to go take a bag from Spire Motorsport and spot one of their cars, but either way, he will not be back with the number nine team in 2024, which is a big change, right? Obviously, Chase Elliott has really only ever heard one voice on the roof uh, for most of his career, at least in the Cup Series, and that's Eddie DeHaan. His cousin, Trey Poole, does sometimes fill in or help out on road courses, but 99% of the time, it's Eddie that's guiding him around that racetrack, and having a new voice in his ear in 2024 is going to be a massive change. And Chase Elliott fans, being the delusional mouth breathers that they are, are like, this is not the big change we are talking about for 2024. They want Alan Gustafson fired because they're dumb and they don't understand that Alan Gustafson is one of the top five best crew chiefs in the garage area, and they couldn't really go find anybody else to replace him that's as good as him, but they don't want to let that part of their brain work. They would instead just like to be like, oh, Ed, uh, Alan's the reason why Chase isn't winning, completely ignoring the fact that like Chase just hasn't really been that good this past season, albeit a really tumultuous season. Back onto the Eddie DeHaan thing though, him not being the spotter is a big change. And Eddie, for I think some of the criticism that he gets where people do talk about him being rather emotional on the radio, like he'll constantly tell Chase to go get him or don't let him do that. He is a really good spotter at guiding a race. He's great at calling a race. He's great at putting his driver in good positions more often than not. And he's a really good super speedway spotter at that. So Chase having a new voice in his ear, especially with the season starting out at Daytona and then going right to, to Atlanta, having two speedway drafting style tracks and a new voice is going to be a very quick learning curve, like baptism by fire, as they like to say, for whoever his new spotter is going to be. So where is Eddie headed next year? Like I said, it feels like Spire might be the landing spot for him. Earlier in the season, or back in the season, if you want to say that, the guys over at Door Bumper Clear mentioned that Spire was taking this approach where they were going to overpay for veteran spotters. Spire is not part of the Race Team Alliance, and all the teams within the Race Team Alliance have kind of set pay scales, if you will, for certain positions. And within spotters, they have a, a min and a max that they like to put their, their guys within. Spire's not part of the RTA. They're not really adhering to these pay scale type of things that have been set out, and they're willing to overpay for spotters, especially veteran ones. And it feels like that might be where Eddie's going. And hey, listen, I'm not going to be a person that's ever going to shame somebody for going out there and getting paid. Go get paid. But spotting for Carson Hosovar doesn't exactly seem like the place that maybe you want to do. And I don't know if it's Carson Hosovar. Could be Zane Smith. Could even be Corey LaJoy. It just doesn't feel like it's going to be Corey because, well, he already has an established spotter. And they have to find two spotters for their two new cars. And that being Carson Hosovar in the 77 and Zane Smith in the number 71 next year. So maybe Eddie's going over there to do that. And like I said, go get paid. Have absolutely no problems with that whatsoever. So now all the big questions around Chase Elliott are, who's going to be Chase Elliott's crew chief in 2024? Who wants to take on that burden of having all of these rabid Justin Bieber, Taylor Swift-like fans listening to you every week and critiquing every single move that you make? Um, I actually don't mind Chase Elliott fans. I find them to be humorous, and there's some really sane ones out there like that are normal and can have a good conversation. Shout out RJ Rogers. Uh, if you've ever seen him on social, he is the Chase Elliott fan that dumps Coca-Cola on his head after Chase wins. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see that last year, but RJ is always uh, a, fun, a fun follow and a fun person to interact with. Big Chase Elliott fan. But... Who's going to take over that spot on top of the roof for him? I still think it's probably going to fall onto Trey Poole, his cousin. Like I said, he has filled in for, for Eddie when Eddie was suspended, when he was going through that whole, um, it wasn't domestic violence per se, assault. I guess it was assault at that boat rental shop in Lake Norman. That's a whole story. If you want to look it up, just Google Eddie DeHaan and arrest or whatever you want to say. Got suspended for that. Obviously came back. What happened there? Just uh, apparently it wasn't an assault, which is good to hear. Obviously, we don't want uh, that to happen. But Trey Poole filled in for him. And then he also has spotted for him at Road Courses filling in there as well. And I just feel like that's probably the direction that they're going to go in because it's a familiar voice to Chase. 
having said that, there are plenty of spotters out there that would willingly ask out of their contracts or would jump at the opportunity to spot for Chase Elliott and be a part of that Hendrick organization. I just feel like they're going to go with somebody that is familiar to Chase and to that team already. Uh, so I feel like it's going to fall into Trey Poole's lap right there, which honestly, if you're going to become a spotter full time for the first time, having it happen with Chase Elliott is phenomenal. It's like Tyler Mon moving over from Rick Ware Racing to take over Kyle Larson in 2021, winning 10 races and an all-star race right off the bat and a championship, and then having the success that they've had over the last three seasons. Yeah, that's like striking gold for him, because I'm sure there's some bonuses that are tied to winning races. And when you are part of a team that wins a lot of races, you're going to get paid. So Eddie DeHaan leaving Chase Elliott, moving over to presumably a new car. Honestly, we don't know. He could might he might not even return to NASCAR next year. It just feels like he's got some good years left in him and there's some opportunities out there, but he will not be back on the roof for the number nine car in 2024. That's a pretty big change, like I said, especially going into Daytona in Atlanta uh, to start the season. So we'll see what happens there, but things are changing over at the nine team as they hope to rebound in 2024 and forget about this entire 2023 season that they just went through. So follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram and Twitter at Break Hard Blog. Like and subscribe to this.